Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XI. So today, uh, we're still in the same lock cell as last time, because I it's really growing on me here, even though I feel like the pants still kind of kind of don't fit. But I don't know, I just feel like pants in this game often don't fit with anything. But here, in our inventory, you might notice we have a Rakaznar Star Stone, which comes only from the basement of Sorty. And we got it today uh, by killing all of the fetid Vilas, which are Karabos-style monsters that are much stronger than Karabos could ever hope to be in the basement of Swarty. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then we had six minutes left, and uh, I still hadn't found the Bitzer in F because I am stupid and ran by it without noticing. So I didn't get a third chance at Star Stones, but this will be our first Rakaznar Star Stone. And what you do with Rakaznar Star Stones is you take them to Rusbix in, uh, or Rusbix if you prefer, uh, in the Falia, and you get yourself Empyrean Armor plus three. And now I don't know if this is going to be my first Imperial Armor plus three, so um, I don't know if it's going to take a day like last time, or if it's going to take like till next conquest tally. <laughs> I hope it's not till next conquest tally, but we'll live if it is. But I just want to show this off on stream because this is kind of like uh, on stream. I'm not streaming. I've never streamed. But no, that's not true. I've, I've streamed before from PS4, but not this game. Anyway, this is going to cost us 70,000 Gallimaufry. It'll take a little while to reforge your boy muffler supposed to. Juno, Juno wasn't built in a day, but this armor will be, so come back tomorrow. Alright, so we're about to get uh, the best gloves for weapon skill damage that Warrior can have in the entire game. Okay, so that's going to be cool. And since it's almost day change, we can get them right away. Now, as with what to do with the rest of this episode that I've started, I have two things in mind. Uh, one would be to go check up on uh, Empyrean Weapon Progress. We, or I, I keep saying we, Epithet Aja really rubbed off on me. Uh, it's the royal we. I'm important. I'm that important. But, uh... Come on, Brain, work with me here. Uh... So, I started working on the Empyrean Great Axe, because... As far as I'm aware, the Ukon Visara is still the Great Axe that does the most damage in the game. Although I've heard some really good things about the Chango, um, which is an Aeonic weapon. But unfortunately for us, Aeonic weapons, they are easy to make if you have a group for them. And we do not have a group for them. Um, Aeonic weapons, you have to do... The event is called Gia's Feet, or maybe Gia's Feet. Uh, G-E-A-S-F-E-T-E. -E. Um, and it's whatever they decide to call the notorious monsters in Eska. Which I think they call them Helm monsters or something. And it's something like, I guess, High Eskin. I don't know what the L stands for. Monster? I don't know. And you have to, like, start on this path, and you need, like, some ridiculous amount of Eskin beads. Um, which you can get from Domain Invasion as well as from other things in Eska. And I think the procedure for getting Eskin beads these days is to just do Domain Invasion over and over again for a few days. Like, and I mean, just, like, the most beads I've ever seen myself get from from uh, 
from Domain Invasion is 1003. And you don't have to stop doing Domain Invasion just because you get all your Domain Invasion points. You can keep doing it over and over again. So you need 50,000 Eskin beads for an Aeonic weapon. So I guess that would be 50 Domain Invasions. And you figure, okay, if Domain Invasion happens every 10 minutes and it takes like depending on how many people are there, you know, like two to five to sometimes a little bit longer minutes to kill the dragon, right? You can probably get about four domain invasions in an hour. So you probably get about 4,000 beads an hour. So it'll take you about, you know, 13 hours to get all the beads, right? So, you know, you set that up, do domain invasion for seven hours straight, two days in a row, and you'll have all the beads you need for an Aeonic. Well, if you've got a group that can take you through and do all the notorious monsters that spawn in the Eskin zones, then you can get an Aeonic, right? The other, the only other requirements are like, you need the attestation from the Dynamis Busidine Farmer NMs of the corresponding weapon type, and then you need, um... Aim. I think the key item you buy with beads is like a uh, worn out version of the weapon or something. You need that, the estimation, all the NMs defeated, like every Eskin Zeta, and then every Eskin, and I think they gotta be done in order too, so you have to defeat all the Eskin ones. In Zeta, and then in Ruan, and then in Raze and Jima. And I think I think there's one more thing. I don't remember what the, the last thing is. I'm pretty sure there's one more thing other than the attestation from Dynamis that you need. And Okay, the day change has occurred. Let's go get our gauntlets. I don't know if I'll ever get a group for... Um, for Ionix. Uh People, there's plenty of mercenaries these days that like sell clears just to basically pick gil off of people easily. They'll sell clear for like 50 million gil or 40 million gil or something. And then they split the guild between themselves and their, like, two other friends or something who are all, like, septuple boxing or whatever. Or quad boxing or something. Uh, but, I, I, I'm one of those people that's just, like, I don't want to pay Gil for something, you know, that, that I can just go do. If I just find sensible people that also want to do it. And here we are, our first Empyrean plus three. Look at that. Weapon skill damage plus 12%. And the standard stats on it are nothing to sneeze at either. Look at that. 47 dexterity, 47 vitality, 38 mind. Like, these things are monstrous. 62 accuracy for both physical and magic, and then a 62 attack. Ooh, it's delicious. It's delicious. And 31 axe skill ain't bad. It ain't nothing to sneeze at either. So of course we'll have to alter our equipment sets, but uh, whoo! It's a beautiful thing, right? Like, bam! You know, and of course they go in our weapon skill setup. They they have no choice but to go in our weapon skill setup. Delicious. Right, and you know, like compare these to like Suluvias and Flama, right? Okay, so they now have they have one more dexterity than Flama, same strength, uh, twelve more vitality. They got two more vitality than even Suluvias. They've got six more mind than Suluvias. 15 more attack, 4 more charisma, you know, uh, 55 more magic evasion, that's the big thing. 1 more haste, 
just they're, 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 they're freaking delicious. They're delicious and nutritious. And I hope to gold box my other Empyrean armor eventually someday. <laughs> of course, now that I've spent almost all my Golly Moth free, we won't be able to get another plus three for quite some time. But uh, maybe I'll get. Maybe by having a plus three piece, I'll get into an actual sortie static at some point. Who knows? I sure don't. But, uh. Yeah, as far as this uh, Empyrean trial goes, um. I was thinking maybe we could go check that out. The, uh. Really simple until you get into Abyssia. I mean, even after you get into Abyssia, it's kind of simple. It's just, I guess, larger step. But... <sighs> you can basically equate every Empyrean trial all the way until you need heavy metal plates with you have to kill a certain notorious monster multiple times. And all of the ones that are literally, like, the objective is satisfied by killing the monster. Uh, you know, it's it's like the first few ones are like, kill this monster three times, or kill this monster six times, or something. And then you reach this point where you hit, like, true lottery spawns, and it's like, kill this, you know, true lottery spawn, like, you know, eight times, or some ridiculous bullshit. But even once you get into Abyssia proper, and you need items to trade in... The items are exclusive, which means you just have to get the drop from the monster. But since they only drop two at a time at the most, the minimum amount of times you would have to kill the monster is 25 times, right? And even if you weren't doing the work of killing the monster yourself, like you were in a group and other people were killing it for you, it would still have to be killed 25 times. The only way it differs is that since the kill credit doesn't require you to equip the trial weapon, you can just kill it with anything. You can fight it at full strength, more or less. And then, uh... Oh, come on, brain. Which one of my mounts would actually come out cold weather? I don't think any of these are cold weather things. I guess technically bombs do, if you count snolls. Um. Yeah, fuck it, let's just try the noble chocobo. I guess the chocobo theme is the mount music. I really wish there was a toggle for other mounts where we could just use the chocobo music instead of the mount theme. I don't really like the mount theme in this game. It's way too repetitive. And also a little too cheery in my opinion. I don't, I don't really need super super duper cheery. Like a sort of subdued cheery is, is all I need. But this particular trial we're on, it's this golem, uh, yeah, and, uh, he spawns, like, all the way at the bottom of Busidine, and I think it's probably actually faster to get to him if you use the Unity Warp to warp you right in front of Feyen, and then road south, It'd be probably slightly faster than the book. But Unity Warps cost Unity Accolades, and honestly, in my opinion, in this era that I'm in now, Unity Accolades are kind of at a premium. They, uh, even though it's only 100 to warp, right, like, um, now that I actually want to do Unity Notorious Monsters for the drops and things, it feels like, and some of them cost thousands just to spawn, uh, it, and then also, you know, the, the fact that you can use Unity Accolades to get money. 
it just kind of feels like, oh, okay, um, these are really at a premium, and I need to, like, be smart with them. Or something. Yeah. It's not really that much farther since we have mounts that we can just ride, right? So. And I'm kind of confused, because, like, you look up this NM on the wikis, and it tells you it spawns right around here between J9 and J8. But the last time I was down here, there was like a Galka Blue Mage over there in full malignance, and he was Japanese, and he had the trial in his search comment for the Almes, and uh, I sent him a tell, he didn't respond. But he also just like never moved, and... Like, I later found... Oh, look, there's another blue mage doing trials out here. Oh, yeah, they're on the same trial. Maybe we can team up with them. I don't know. But if they're, if they're out here, I, like, I guess my po point of coming out here was just to, like, sort of... Come out here. Like, y you can team up with people for these trials. You just have to be in the same party. But the blue mage that was out here in full malignance, he was, like, standing all the way back in J9. And I didn't feel like, according to the wiki map, that it spawned that far south. Um, I don't know if the, if the placeholder is technically down here, or, you know, what. You know, notorious monsters in this game can be absurdly weird, but, uh... Either way, you know, it's just kind of like one of those things. And he, like, left. He, like, killed a golem a few times, and then he left the area. And, uh... I found the golem shortly after that, you know, closer to that tower back where that other blue mage we just saw was standing. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long that blue mage has been there. I'd heard all mace wasn't even that good to make anymore because of how crazy the uh, Tizona outpaces it, and then the Nagaling, and then like the red mage dynamics divergent sword, and then like it's not good for Paladin either because Paladin wants the Burt Gang mythic. You know. But there's a there's a golem that spawns around here. That's clearly what she's after. Um, she doesn't send me like a tell like team up or whatever. I'll just like leave because I'm not gonna compete. Like, I'm either gonna I'm either gonna join up or I'm gonna just leave. Like this is kind of where our Empyrean progress is sitting at. And that's all I really need to show you, right? Like, I don't need to show you... I don't need to record camping this thing, right? Like, like that would not be worth your time. It's barely worth mine. But, uh... Yeah. I think it's called, like, Gargantua or something like that. I think I need like three more kills on it, or maybe four more kills on it. Of course, what that blue mage might be doing is, um... The Empyreans, they give an attribute bonus, and Almace gives dexterity. And the attribute bonus on the Empyreans gets pretty ridiculous. Like, I think at once you get them to Afterglow 3, I want to say it's plus 50. It might be plus 70, though. It's been a while since I looked them up. It's pretty substantial, though. And the craziest thing about it is for the one-handed Empyreans, which would include... Um, sword, club, axe... And... Um, I guess dagger. I think that's 
I think that's the size of it, pretty much. Sword, club, dagger, and axe. Okay, okay, regular katana would also count. Um, basically, you still get the attribute bonus from them, like the, the dexterity plus 50 or whatever it is. And with daggers and... Um, oh, maybe she found it. Maybe we can actually go see her kill it. I don't know. With daggers and... Uh, Daggers and swords, right? Uh, dexterity is a worthwhile attribute to have. Um, because one, it translates into a lot of accuracy. And two... Um, the... Uh, <sighs> Since it works in the offhand, the particularly the dagger, I believe, is considered to be the best offhand weapon for every other dagger in the game. Because dagger jobs like Dancer and Thief, they uh, they do wield, you know, almost exclusively, and so they need really good offhand. And just the f simple fact that the dexterity. You know, it's not only just a ton of accuracy and crit rate, it's also a bunch of uh, modifier for sneak attack and for any critical hit and for any dexterity based weapon skill, which the large portion of dagger weapon skills are all dexterity, you know, modifiers. You know, like shark bites, like 40% dexterity, 40% agility, you know, evisceration is like. 30% or 3% uh, dexterity or something like that. You know, Rouge Storm is like 80% dexterity. Uh, I want to say Extenerator is like agility or something. But uh, where'd she go? Maybe she, is she just running around or is she like running off to kill a stone golem or did she find the NM? I'm confused. Are you still in the zone, Misha X? Yeah, she's still here. Hey, look, we're, we're in the same master level range. How about that? She's just running around. Well, we're both Bastok. Yeah. Kind of weird though, I'm pretty sure the golems would normally spawn by now, but maybe she's running around and killing them faster than I can look at them on wide scan. Either way, I don't want to like spend all the all the recording out here, so... I just kill this golem and buzz out. I don't want to bother that person. I used to be a lot more competitive, but uh... Uh, obviously, there's no point in actually competing on these NMs. Like, you can just share the credit. As long as you're in the kill party with the weapon equipped, you will get um, you will get credit towards your Magian trial, you know, to make your Empyrean. And, uh... It's yeah, about the size of it, so... Good luck to you, Misha X. I've got bigger fish to fry. And by that I mean uh, I'm just gonna go other places and do other things. Now my other idea for what to show off next is we kind of have neglected Wings of the Goddess zones almost completely because we did the entire story, right? And the story was the most important thing to do out of Wings of the Goddess. But there is a whole wing of side content that we haven't done, no pun intended, 
uh, you know, called Campaign Battle. And Campaign Battle is, you know, it's painfully simple, right? Like, like there's no, there's no challenge to it these days. Like, we can just storm into any Campaign Battle of Trusts and basically be hell on wheels and kill the absolute shit out of whatever we fight. So, and also with Rapsi's key item, I believe we're allowed to skip, to rank up every hour. And so I was thinking, okay, wouldn't it be fun to just go around in the past and uh, kick ass and campaign? You know, why not, right? Why not? We can use food. We can use trusts. Like we can hold off entire waves of beastmen by ourselves now. You know. And eventually, when we get to the highest rank, we'll be able to buy all sorts of gear, uh, some swords that give you unique uh, campaign-only weapon skills that are especially used to be especially good in campaign. Including, I think the one from Sandioria gives you access to Uriel Blade, which is that weapon skill that the Lineral uses. And uh, I remember people back in the day got those, and, and they looked really fucking cool when they did them in campaign. But in my opinion, back in the day, like, ranking up took so long, and was so hard to maintain, because you get an evaluation run on you every week, and the evaluation, you know, if, if you don't meet rank up requirement, you're boned, right? Like, you, you have to spend an entire another week doing campaign, and then, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of a shit show. So, what I was thinking, though, was, hey, right, like, I don't have to show us ranking up all the way. But we can work on campaign and see if we could get a rank up on on camera. And then maybe if off camera, if I work on it enough, uh, which I don't know how often I'd work on it because I'm still in the middle of my 15 week grind for job points. Uh, and last week I actually missed out on about 98 job points for my turn in at Obro, which means I'm still on track to finish the 15 week grind. But this week I'm only up to 68 so far. And uh, you gotta turn in 700 a week to make the 15 week mark. And uh, for five of those weeks you can turn in 600 instead. Because uh, for 15 weeks you'll wind up at 10,500 and he only needs 10,000. So you have a you have a 500 job point leeway, which means you could actually potentially, you know, one week, if you were just really not feeling it, you could just do 200. But that's essentially mastering five jobs. And, uh... <laughs> oh, man. It's, uh, it's painful. So. Anyway. Now that we're in the past and we're gonna devote ourselves to some campaign, uh, we need to look for where battles are actually happening. Looks like there's one going on in Pashau, on uh, Eldigan Macropolis, Funkerl Inlet, Marifato Mountains, Garlic Citadel, uh, Rollenberry Field. Let's go to Rollenberry Field. Let's go see if we can save Rollenberry Field. Something I always found really fun about Wings of the Gas Zones was getting teleported out to the areas. This was one of the first... I guess it was the second teleportation system in the game that was really, really convenient. And, uh... I love it. Back in the day, people kind of had go-to campaign zones. And I always came here to Rollenberry Fields, or the Jungner Forest, or to a few other places. I never, I hardly ever went anywhere else. Okay, and... 
We literally don't need any tank trust at this point because we're just... We're a better tank than tank trust, baby. But we also don't need to be, like, fully serious. Like, we don't need to, like, commit to Kultada or anything, I guess. So. Let's pull out some Arciella. I'm sure campaign monsters can probably be kind of weird, so. Maybe some magic damage would look good. Oh, hello, quad of turret. Oh man, you guys are. You got a whole fucking thing of wyverns here. War. Agitara? Adject. Tara. Wild. Probably switch to Great Axe here in a minute. Okay, so we don't need to be like doing the sword meta that's going on currently with this game. Okay, wait, so do we just kill the Agitaras, or do we, like, do we hit the turret itself? Let me hit the turret. Surely the turret needs to be broken, right? Because these are lower level things, our trusts actually do halfway decent damage to them. It's amazing! Also, I kind of like how they looped Adeline into Wings of the Goddess via a time travel shenanigan. It took an NPC that was like always in Wings of the Goddess, and they uh, they made it Ar Arciella's father, who apparently got thrown into the past by walking into some sort of cavernous maw-like thing that was like part of Rakaznar or something, uh, and you know got lost in this wartime. So he basically he just. This whole story is he became a mercenary, and I'm pretty sure we can actually find him in the past if we do enough campaign battle. And maybe if I'm while I'm doing this to rank up or something, if I find him, I'll uh, I'll like make a bonus video or something, or just like a short little like, hey, look, it's Arcella's father sort of video. Which, I mean, I don't think that would really get that many views or, like, be worth commenting on, but I don't know, I should show it off and be like, Hey, look, video confirmation of Arcella's father in Wings of the Goddess areas. One cool thing I always found about, um campaign battle is that uh, oh is there a see something like another turret here let's look for you get out of here get that out Yeah, we just killed. Did, did he come from anywhere? Like, or did he just like appear? I, I thought there was like the uh, the confluence or whatever.
Back to the capital, Jeeves. I mean, Wayward Echo. Now we could see if we're suitable for a thing, I think. I don't think we'd get promoted off of one campaign battle. Okay. Uh, yeah, so basically, if if you still got time to work on you, you can always check in and see what your progress is like. And she basically told us, oh yeah, uh, you did some stuff. But, you know, you're not going to rank up. But whenever you saw the, you know, you won't be demoted or whatever, uh, that was always good. So I guess let's go try to save the Sandy Orions and Bunker Inlet. Why not? Probably get there and it'll probably be over. The region info map isn't always up to date. Um, for one thing, there's the latency between the United States and Japan, where the servers are. And then there's also just the fact that, like, it's never been a one to one, like, it takes a while for it to catch up to the actual state of things. So whenever you look at it, it's always behind. Oh, hey, look who it is. I believe that that is Arcella's father. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's him. Unless that's a player. That might be a player, actually. Okay, never mind. That's, that's a player. I'm a fool. I was a foolish fool. A foolish fool! Let's get stupid and weird. Stupid and weird is my middle name. Look at that, we got a party full of three red mages. It's amazing. Oh look, a master level 25 warrior that is stylocked to be a white mage that has a mostly augmented chango and then full sack paddas which comes from uh, Odyssey, I believe. I actually really want that set for its magic evasion. Like look at that, it has as much magic evasion, if not a little bit more, than uh, Malignant's. It's basically malignants for heavier armor classes. And, uh. I want it. But you need to be able to beat the boss. I think Sakpata. Or, I don't know if that's what the boss is called, actually. Being able to beat. Yeah, you gotta beat. You gotta beat the boss at at least rank zero difficulty. Aw, oh, man, I'm jelly. Man, where do you get the Telos earring? That's a fucking baller earring. I'm looking that up. Hoisty Bonhar. I think that's from, uh... No, I don't know where that's from. I know you can augment it, though. Let's see. see, this is why you examine people, though. You can see what they have, and then it can 
cause you to load something up that'll propel you towards your next goal. Let's see, Telos Earring. Ah, Warder of Courage from Eskeruan, which is the level 150 version of Absolute Virtue that uh, people threw themselves against back in like whenever it first came out, which I think was like 2017. Might have been a little bit before that. It was after they introduced uh, job points, I know that much. Okay, is there, is that, is there actually a campaign battle going on here or what? Huh. This is one bad thing about campaign. It's like the uh, enemy forces you know, they actually run in, and, uh... Since they actually run in... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yawn heavily, no, um... Since they run in, it's, uh... Eh, you know what? Sorry, King of Hearts, you gotta go. I've gotta have that sweet, sweet victory march. But yeah, since they run in, it takes them forever to get here. And then when they get defeated, uh, like you can defeat an entire wave of NMs, and uh, you know, like their whole legion, and the campaign battle for the area will persist for whatever the set timer is, I believe. And then it's like, uh, I don't know if it's random or not, it's probably not random. But, uh, there's a chance that more beastmen will come in. And you usually get like a text prompt that's like, you know, the eighth orcish brigade of sexy bitches is beginning their attack on the Vunkrill Inlet, approaching from the east or something. And then you'll have a bunch of orcs run in from like the north, and you'd be like, "Well, I thought you said the east." <laughs> well, then you have to wonder about things. Yeah, from the, what I understand, the uh, Order of Courage, the level 150 version of Absolute Virtue, he was beaten after substantial um, attempts, and then um, once people got master levels, it got easy or something. But he's he's basically like Absolute Virtue if Absolute Virtue was fair. And it dropped some pretty interesting stuff, honestly. Like, he drops a gun that's for Corsair alone, and it has like 25 agility, 30 magic attack bonus, critical hit damage plus 10%, and then uh, ranged attack plus 45. Drops a spear for Dragoon only that has 36 accuracy, 34 attack, 300 base damage. It's a Mezrak shaped spear. And then it has enmity minus 5, stored PvP plus 8, dragon killer plus 20, and critical hit rate plus 5%. Sounds pretty baller. Uh, a scythe that's really good for draining. It has drain and ask your potency plus 20. Soul eater plus 35, whatever the fuck that does. Alber Strap, which is magic attack bonus, 
plus seven and midi plus five and then some weird physical stats i don't know what that's supposed to be about the zindic robe the best thing that it looks like he drops these days is the telos hearing i wouldn't mind having that corsair gun in all honesty although i'm sure there's way better options nowadays Although I think whenever I play Corsair, uh, I'm going to make, because I, I do want to play Corsair, like, there's so many other jobs I actually want to work on. Like, I want to work on Samurai, because I'm making the Mythic for that, slowly but surely. Uh, which, whenever I get that done, showing that off is going to be a highlight of the Let's Play, uh, which is probably one of the reasons I haven't actually quit the Let's Play yet. Um, so I want to work on Samurai for sure. I want to work on Red Mage and Blue Mage for sure, because, like, Blue Mage is one of my favorite jobs in this game of all time. Red Mage is one of my favorite Final Fantasy jobs of all time. Uh, all the way back to Final Fantasy 1, Red Mage is my favorite job from, from the original Final Fantasy. I, I, I fucking love Red Mage. Um... And, but then in this in this game I really 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 love the lore surrounding Corsair F like the kingdom of Ephraimads like whole like you know lost cause like spiritual struggle uh, it, it's not even really spiritual it's just a direct struggle with the Empire and then having to live under their yoke in the modern age like that really speaks to me on a certain level because um, I just like I don't know I, it, it just really speaks to me and since there's no campaign monsters hitting us up here let's just go ahead and go somewhere else because fuck waiting you know there's so many other campaign battles going on supposedly uh, I think Subalne and Aw Vang got it covered here I can't believe I stuck that guy for uh, Duke Lodgett's father. I saw Dark Knight armor. I was like, oh, spiky shoulder pads and the, the correct human face. RCL's father. Bada bing bada boom. I was like, no, you idiot. That's just a player. I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> Should have figured with the name not being green and all. I saw one going on in East Ronfar, so let's go there, why not? They're holding the good music hostage! We gotta kill them to, to get rid of them. Yeah, I'm guessing part of the reason the whole delay happens is... I'm guessing there's some sort of queue system for the different legions of Beastmen, and whenever a campaign battle starts, I think there's two things that happen. I think the campaign battle goes on a, like a one hour timer or maybe a two hour timer or something like that. And then there's probably like a set number and then a set list of um, beastmen legions that are supposed to go fight in the campaign battle. But they can't be two places at once in the data. And so I think that what happens is Oh look, the line rolls out actually in a campaign battle. Look, it's real the line roll. How about that? What a badass. So what what I think happens is uh, basically, you know, you get like one Legion of Beastmen attacking a certain stronghold, but they're also on the list they get they get slotted into the list for a different campaign battle. And so you wind up waiting at one campaign battle or another uh, more often than you otherwise would because it, you know they just get hung up. So. Okay, I guess I'll try going to Battalion Down since the monsters aren't here either yet. But no, I don't want that. God damn it. I don't know if it hurts our. Uh,
performance at all if we get tags and then don't earn any credit. It's like it's impossible to earn credit though unless there's monsters to hit or a fortress to hit if you're doing an offensive campaign battle. Which there are offensive campaign battles where you have to beat on the fortifications. And uh Back in the day, those were the preferred ones for just getting easy EXP because you could literally, uh, a lot of times the fortifications were not protected by beastmen, and so you could just throw your character on the, um, the fortification and then walk away and do whatever you wanted for like an hour and come back and the campaign battle would still be going. And then you disengage and go get a performance assessment and you'd have the max tags and uh, uh, allied notes or whatever that you get for for thing. You'd sign up for uh... you'd sign up for the battle again and go back to, to doing the exact same thing. And you don't need to worry about trying to weapon skill at all because like the fortifications take heavily reduced damage to like single digit numbers. So like you wouldn't be doing any fighting really. Oh look, actual orcs to fight. I smell allied nuts. You know, I attack, please. I have some orcish filth to clean up. We're gonna go postal on these bitches with the good setup. If we can ever get maximum rank, we can also do the Shadow Lord fight in the past if we got looks. Which will give us some really awesome. Lock armor and possibly unlock some other high tier battlefields. I, I don't think they actually ever did a high tier battlefield of that, which is kind of a shame because it drops this unique armor called the Nocturnus set, which is this really fucking cool looking armor. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't uh, seem to be a thing. Really anymore. Like occasionally you might see some people in it, but it's, it's so rare because hardly anyone ever bothered to get capped rank. And since it's not, it's level 75 armor actually. Uh, it's like from the very end of level 75 content. And if I remember right, it's something like the armor piece has like I think it's 12 strength, dexterity, and agility. I want to say. It might be less than that, but I want to say it's 12, and then, like, I want to say 12 accuracy as well, and then the helmet is, like, 8 strength, dex, and agility, and then, uh, I want to say 12 attack or something, and the body also goes 1% triple attack, as for, like, the heavy armor jobs as well as Samurai and Dragoon. And it's ba it's the armor that the Shadow Lord wears in the past. And then there was... His uh, great sword, the uh, Nightfall, which is the sword model he wields in his Shadow Rain form, which I believe he dual wields, and that was a great sword at level 75. It had 85 base damage and I think additional effect Terror 
I want to say. So it's a way the player can actually inflict terror on monsters. Which I don't think would be something you could really inflict these days. But, uh, you know, who knows? If you go and look on the um, soundtrack art for the Voracious Resurgence, I think there's a Galka on there that's wearing the Nocturnus set. If you've ever wondered what that armor is and that artwork, that's the Nocturnus armor. Which it's... I believe in-game it's called Nocturnus Mail for the body, and then just Nocturnus Helm for the helmet. Alright, can we get a rank up? Standards are low, come on. Ooh, look! New metal, awesome. Yeah, accept the honors, baby. Rank me up on camera. Do it for the vine! The Bronze Star, huh? Guess we we're finally out of ribbons. And the cool thing is, they did some update... Uh, some update at some point that causes us to not need to worry about it because we've finished Wings of the Goddess's story. So even if we get a negative evaluation eventually, uh, we will be able to not get demoted, so we'll never lose our medals. Uh, but even if we did, since we can get evaluated every hour instead of every five days, uh, if I really focus on this, I'm pretty sure I can get to capped rank in like a f few days if I just really hit these campaign battles hard. But also, kind of like what I said earlier, since I'm on the job point grind, that's going to be something that kind of like happens sporadically, so I don't know exactly when I'll get to it. And also, as far as I'm aware, in order for Fiat Lux to become accessible, not only do you have to be maximum rank, but the allied forces have to take the Northlands. And I don't know if they have to take the entire Northlands, like I don't know if they have to take both Bucini Glacier and Zarkbard and Castles of Vol, or if they just have to take Castles of Vol, or if they have to like take them all, I, I don't know. But, uh, at currently, you know, uh, campaign battles kind of like besieged in a way, where, like, as long as at least a few people are doing it, I don't think the allied forces ever really lose all of their things. But the coolest thing about campaign battle back in the day was that if people didn't do it, the allied forces would lose all of their areas. And you'd only have your city. And it, whenever it came down to that, the campaign battles would actually start happening in the city. And uh, that made things feel super desperate. Because, you know, this, like, you would think the city is supposed to be a safe place, but, you know, you, you could retrace back here and be in the middle of a campaign battle if not enough people from your... Uh, faction or your nation were doing campaign and as far as items go let's just take a look right because we can always just take a look Medal of Altana is the highest rank and we can get a sword that gives us glory slash in campaign uh, and a cape that gives regain in campaign that would have been amazing back in the day but specifically for campaign. Most of this stuff is like for campaign or for, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. And each uh, faction has an armor set that's like level 68 to 72, I think. And Bastox is this uh, fourth division set. And, uh, some interesting things I've never looked at here. Wait, what was 
was that exactly? Okay. It was campaign. Alt potency. Sturm's report. And you can kind of see that some of this stuff was like kind of useful out of campaign back in the day. But, you know, it's really, really more so for, uh, Excuse me, I'm sorry, it's like 4 a.m. But yeah, you can kind of tell it's more for, like... It really is more for campaign itself. Like, I remember getting some of this stuff back in the day uh, to use outside of campaign. Like this helmet, for instance, the 4th Division Halby, which I don't know why it's called that. Uh, it's a helmet. But it's a pretty cool looking helmet, and it's got strength plus three. And you might not think that's anything to write home about, but back at the 75 cap, okay, um, outside of the Hecatome hat, uh, Warrior in particular out of these jobs lacked a good headpiece option to wear. Because, like, I want to say Beastmaster and Samurai. And I think Dark Knight and Paladin as well. And I know I think Dragoon too. They could wear the Wyvern helmet. I guess I could look the Wyvern helmet up to uh, verify. Is it Wyvern? Helm? There we go. Yeah, Wyvern Helm. Uh, Dark Knight, Beastmaster, Ranger, Samurai, and Dragoon. Okay. So I guess Paladin's not on it. But, but all the other damage dealer ones are kind of are. And uh, it was a strength plus five helmet, and the high quality version was strength plus six. And it was like this iconic helmet that's made through Bonecraft. And uh, it was like a staple. It was like something you would just see everyone wear if they were like Samurai or Dark Knight. And it's strength plus five or plus six. Or you're outside of the Hecatome hat warrior didn't have access to hardly anything else that had strength on it like i think your best bet was like probably the voyager sale which was strength plus three and dex plus four but that was you know there's a lot of competition to get that so this this helmet was an option to get a strength plus three option on warrior in the head slot uh where not a lot of other options actually existed at the time and I actually used it for quite a while. Uh, that was pretty much the only piece of the set that I ever used for any amount of time. And you've got these uh, earlier sets that I guess we can actually buy because we have Star now or whatever. And they're, these are just like Iron Musketeer set but with actual stats, more or less, instead of the minuscule or non-existent stats that are on them in the modern day set that you get from conquest points but the stats on these still aren't very good well look if for some reason we didn't have Lineros alter ego we could get it amazing anyway um We can't rank up again for another hour, and I'm getting kind of tired of talking. <laughs> Look, we got we got a Purion plus three. We're the we're the greatest. Um, again, just let me know what you want to see. Um, outside of working on Empyrean and stuff like that, my other idea for side quests, because you know someone requested side quests, was to go into Abyssia and do the Abyssia side quests. Because, uh, you know, Abyssia fame doesn't really matter that much at all, but as a result, it's like one of those things that people never do. Like, they, people who go to Abyssia nowadays, they ignore everything except just, like, going to Shinryu, which we already did in the Let's Play. But we didn't do any of the side quests. Like, we didn't really talk to any of the NPCs. I don't think I did any of, like, uh, 
marshmallow defense. <sighs> I can't remember what it's called for real. But uh, it's like 4, 4 a.m. and uh, I need to be getting to bed uh, or something. So, again, uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great day. And I'll see you again next time.